This is a Shug the Dug production. Before we had political correctness, we had shipbuilding and shipyard shenanigans. Episode 7, Trains and Homeless. Duke and Aby are standing in the train station. Right, you big ass. Stop picking your nose and pay attention. It's time to move. If we don't get into the carriages first, we'll not get a double seat. OK, that's the last train going. Let's move. Come on, big man, get you up. Keep up, you big dafty. It's thinking with these coming up you fast. And if you get some those first, they'll go for the big corner seat. Ugh, oh, all the doors on this side are low. Quick, get in the other side. Go on, bone to big gullet. Come on, get down to the rear. Hey, watch that dog's tail. <coughs> Did it bite you, big man? Aye. Bloody dog. So it was worth it to get the best seats. Aye, a wee asshole, Duke. You know I always like the corner seat. <laughs> Aye, man, I've got no first or last, biggie. It's early morning, and train passengers have noticed their seats are wet. Oh, has anyone else here got a damp seat? Yes, mine is damp. Yeah, mine too. They're always damp early morning. I inquired about it, and they told me they wash the trains at night, and sometimes the seats are only completely dry. They gave me a voucher for the trolley as compensation. (laughs) Hmm. Doesn't it smell like soap to me? Oh, my seat smells like piss. Within the train station, Aby and Duke are approached by representatives of the Street Dossers Committee. Come here, you two. I think he means us. Why is it, Balfour? As you know, we are the elected representatives of the Town Dossers and Jakey's Association. I do know that. You're clanking studs. Twinned with a Calcutta, Bombay's, Jakey's Association, horns across the sea and all that. <laughs> Shut up, Clotty. You know he can't help making that noise. Right, you two. You also know we have an agreement with the train company who turn a blind eye to us dossing in the carriages, providing we comply with their rules. Shut up, Clarty! You can't help it. Shut up, Clarty! Right, where was I? That's right, the rules. One, no throwing up in the carriages. Two, no dogs except disabled dogs, and they're not allowed to throw up a shit anywhere. Me wackle dog is not disabled in it, but the big man here. It's not the dogs that have to be disabled, it's their owners. <laughs> Shut up, Clarty. You two studs. Rule number three. If you're fortunate to have a wee bevy, then you must take the empties off with you in the morning. OK, and four, most importantly, relating to this matter, no... Seat passing! <laughs> we know that's the most important one, Clatty. You don't have to remind us. I just does not know what Clatty's saying. Never you mind. Now, up to now, the train company have been passing wet seats off as having been washed, but they've had enough. So what's this got to do with us? <laughs> Shut up, Clatty. Let Bowfer tell it. Now, myself, Clatty and the wee studs as the elected committee have to be seen to be taking action and have asked our members to name the culprits. They have all fingered you two. <laughs> we know it's not in the biblical sense, so will you shut up and let Bowfer finish? So what we're saying here is you two are banned from the carriages. What are you talking about? I never pissed any seat. We know that. You're banned for your association with big pissy pants here. 
We've got to let the train company see we're making an example of people. I said, no, right. It's like been thrown out of our house. So, where are we supposed to sleep tonight? You can try the hostel. What, Fraggle Rock? You'd know fine we hod down jobs at the yard. And the hostel expects us to do chores before we leave, keeping us late for our work. Well, that's your problem. We're taking a vote. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Clatty. It was unanimous. What I'm saying is... You're not welcome back here until this tomcat learns to control his pisser. Now clear out. My big soggy pants, you've really dropped us in at this time. You always blame me. But we better get off to Fraggle Rock if we want a bed for the night. and Aby attempt to escape Fraggle Rock. We hold that ladder still, the big fool. I think this handle's been welded shut. Hand me up some to some put the I will not going to get out. And where are you two going? Did you forget the rules? A hot meal and a bed for the night in exchange for chores. We're grateful for the bed and the breakfast, but we've got work to get to. We're going to be late if we don't get away now. You sure are. Now get down from that ladder, grab the brushes and the pair of you start sweeping. This isn't fair. Neither is the hair on Muhammad Ali's head. Get working. This staying in Fraggle Rock isn't working, big man. I think we'll have to look at extreme measures. Huh? That's right, we might have to put a council homeless application in. Duke, having recovered from his ordeal, attends social services to review his application for council accommodation. It's me, my lady. Duke. Of course it is. Come in and take a seat. Right, Mr Finnegan. I can see from these medical reports that your doctor has confirmed your bronchitis is acerbated by the living conditions. <coughs> OK, you don't have to overdo it. Sorry, Your Honour. I've told you before, I'm a social services officer, not a judge, although chances would be a fine thing. Now, where was I? Ah, yes, your medical report. <coughs> All right, enough of that. I've already accepted your medical condition. Aye, the doc says I shouldn't be sleeping rough, that I should get a place to live that's warm and dry. Now, I'm looking at your previous accommodation we placed you in. The last one was the aerial bed and breakfast in Great Western Road. A furnished establishment catering mostly for travelling men. That place wasn't very welcoming. It says in the report that the other guests complained about the smell coming from you and that after you moved in, soap started going missing. They never found the thief, but were reluctant to pin it on you. Why would I steal soap? Yes, it is baffling, especially when in the follow-up inquiry, the owner says once you had left, it stopped going missing. It's not something I use much. Yes, exactly. Now, the previous place you were placed in, they kicked you out after only one night. I never liked their people. Yes, And it seems they never liked you either. It says that they caught you trying to sell their dog? I didn't know the dog belonged to them. It was just a dog that hung about the place. Of course it hung about the place. That's where it lived. Stupid thing kept barking. Now before that, someone who is no longer employed here placed you in the Grange, a more upmarket boarding house. I liked it there. Yes, but they never liked you. Miss Trotter... The owner of the Grange said that you continually walked around dressed in old, dirty underwear. When I first arrived there, she told me to make myself at home. At home, yes. But a member of staff reported catching you urinating in the kitchen sink. Somebody was in the toilet. I was almost pissing myself. It says here the member of staff caught you on three occasions. But the last straw was them finding you sprawled out in the front yard, sleeping. Naked, drunk and sleeping. It's not a crime. Yes, it is. 
especially at the Grange. It's all wife has did say to make myself at home. So, you've been round social services full circle and ended up back to me, Mr Finnegan. It's Duke. Everyone calls me Duke. All right, Duke. Now, I've gone over all the past circumstances of your prior accommodations we've placed you in and have determined the problem is you're not fit to be put up in locations with the normal public. Thank you, my lady. It wasn't a compliment. Now, according to your application, you are presently homeless, correct? Yes, Your Honour. Now, with your medical records and... (laughs) ..and your registered alcoholism, I see you're still holding down a full-time job, although due to being in extreme debt, your income is limited. See, it's the moneylenders. They wait at the guard gate every Friday and take most of my wages from me. Well, that's a matter for the police to deal with. Bah, the police are useless. They won't even lock me up overnight. See, I stink out their cells. Well, I wouldn't blame them for that. I see here on two occasions we gave you a crisis loan, which you admitted buying drink with. See, it was my big mate's birthday. I as close as I could remember it and I. Anyway, due to your present circumstances, I would like to offer you a fully furnished council flat with subsidised rent. How much rent? It's all here in the form. Now... I did have a pen a moment ago. I've got a pen. I can see that. It's even got my name on it. Now, if you're happy to sign at the bottom of the page, then return both form and pen to me. I can arrange for someone to take you over to look at the flat. That'll be grand, Your Honour. This has been a Shug the Duck production. (coughs) Shipyard Shenanigans was devised by James T. Tiffany. This episode was written and directed by James T. Tiffany and produced by Shug the Duck Productions. It was recorded at Headhunter Studios Glasgow and edited by Samson Video Productions. The music was obtained from royalty-free sources. The role of Duke was played by Brian Brady, A.B. by Benjamin Smith, Stinky McGee and Bowfer by Colin McGregor, First Train Woman by Bev Sweeney, The Second Train Woman and The Housing Officer by Rona Fallon, First Train Man and Johnny by Neil MacDonald, and The Second Train Man by John Hughes. We Studs by Susan Sims and Clappy by James Tiffany. The narrator was William Sampson.